In this video, we're going to learn how to interface car parts with a car body. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and thanks for joining me in this video. This is going to be a single part video, not part of a series, but it's a topic that I wanted to cover because it's something that a lot of people try to do. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different ways in which we can create geometry, in this case, spoiler attachments, that will match a car body. Now, the car body that we're dealing with here is a 2010 Camaro. This is something I drew back in 2009, 2010, when this was first going to be released as a production car. So this model itself is very old, but it's going to suit what we need to do here. So a couple things that I do want to talk about and the different ways that we, which we can actually do this. And there are a couple different things that we can do. If we're just talking about strict body parts, if we are just making geometry, we can use tools like split body or we can use our surface tools, which also include things like split and we can trim. And these are different ways in which we can create geometry that perfectly matches a surface that we have. But sometimes we actually want to take that geometry into our forms workspace and create more organic features. And in that case, if we want to use that method to attach to a body, we're going to need a mesh. It's not strictly required, but it does give us a bit more flexibility. So we're going to try to talk about all three different ways, using a surface with form bodies, using a mesh with form bodies, and then also just using a surface for parametric design. In order to do this, we're going to begin with this Camaro model, which you can find in the description of this video. We're going to expand the bodies, and we want to look for the body that is the trunk lid. And if we select this, you'll notice that it highlights the bodies folder, and if we scroll down through this list, you can see it shows us the trunk. Now, to get started, I'm going to right-click on the trunk, and I'm going to isolate it. I'm only going to show the trunk, and you'll notice that it doesn't really hide everything else. All it did was it hid all the other components, the rims and the wheels and so on. That's not exactly what we want to do. We only want to focus on the trunk, but we still need to see some other bodies. So in order to do this, we can manually hide a bunch of the other different bodies and tools, um, or we can select the entire bodies folder and hide the entire thing, or we can select all of the bodies inside of this folder by holding down shift, right click and select show hide. And then we can bring back just the trunk. Of course, we don't really need to see the rims or any of the different details that were added so that we could turn the front wheels for renders in the other video series. So now that we have a trunk body, I wanna start by noting that this is a surface body to get started. It's not a solid body. It hasn't been thickened. It doesn't have an inside and an outside. It's really just for show. But we're gonna right click on the trunk and we wanna create a copy of it. Now we can do this by using Control or Command C and Control or Command V to paste it. Uh, we can also use Move Copy, which will allow us to create a copy and we don't actually have to move the body. And it really is the same thing, but if we wanna move it, this is a great option. So what I'm gonna do is Control or Command C to copy it. In this case, I'm gonna right click and select Copy and then just click in the canvas area somewhere, right click and select Paste. I'm gonna say OK, because I don't wanna move it anywhere. And you'll notice that if we go back up to our bodies folder at the very top level, we expand this, we now have a trunk here and we have the main body here that we're going to be dealing with. Now this main body is a form body and I'm gonna take the copy paste body and I'm gonna drag it before it in the timeline just so when I edit this, I will have access to that trunk surface. There's one more thing that we do need to do and we need to take this trunk, we need to convert it to a mesh. And this is the whole reason why I copied it. So I'm gonna to navigate to my mesh tools. And it's also a good idea to note that parametric mesh is available in Fusion 360. And it's always a good idea for you to go up to your user preferences and just double check any preview features or functionality that's available. So you'll notice that you can pick general or you can pick simulation, generative design or manufacturing. When we go to general, you can see that right now, mesh repair analysis is something that we have and also the available option to use uh, space mouse. I'm not gonna turn on mesh repair analysis, but just know that there are things that happen to be in those preview features from time to time. So it's always a good idea to just check. So now that we're in here, I have the trunk already selected. 
I'm gonna convert it. And under the create, we have the option to insert a mesh, to tessellate, and to create mesh section. If we right click on this, you'll notice that we don't really see any options with exception of save as a mesh. But really what we wanna do is we wanna convert it. So I'm gonna use the tessellate option. And when I select tessellate, I need to select the body. We can turn on a preview if you want. And I highly suggest that we use create quads, which is something that is relatively new with the, um, the introduction of paramesh. So we wanna use quads because quads allow us to convert that to a form or a T-spline body, or at least it gives us a much better, um, better chance of having that happen. You'll notice that it doesn't have all quads, which means that these triangular meshes still won't be able to be converted, but it's okay. The only thing that we're really concerned about right now is the fact that we have a mesh. So we're gonna say, okay, and note that now we have the original trunk surface and we have this um, mesh trunk surface. So we wanna scroll down and notice that the one that ended up being converted was the one that was inside of here. If that's not what you wanna do, you can always use Control or Command Z to undo because it's important to note that the mesh creation in this case, it's, it's going to be a, a parametric thing in the fact that it is captured in the timeline, but it's not going to be parametric in the fact that we can just go back and forth whenever we want. So now that we've hidden the original since we had two shown, let's select the copy of the trunk, select tessellate, and once again, create quads is turned on, and I'm gonna say okay. So now we have this mesh, you'll see that the mesh is not closed, and that's because we converted a surface, and that's totally fine. Uh, and again, we wanna make sure that this is before the form body in the timeline. That's gonna be important for us. Now that we have the mesh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start modifying this spoiler. So I'm gonna double click on form one, and this brings me into my form tools. For now, I'm gonna minimize the 2010 Camaro body mirror. I don't need to see all that stuff. And what I really wanna do is I wanna figure out ways in which I can attach to my mesh. So to do this, I'm gonna expand my bodies folder and I'm gonna temporarily hide the mesh. And then I'm just gonna pick a couple faces here. I'm just gonna use control or command to select those, go to modify, and then I'm going to hold down the alt key and drag this down. When I hold the Alt key and drag this down, what we're actually doing is we're creating an extrude. Keep in mind that the Alt trick to extrude these can uh, it can happen when you're using Scale or Transform. It won't work for Rotate, but if you're scaling something down or you're transforming it, um, it will allow you to create that extrude. From here, I'm gonna say OK. And while I'm here, I'm gonna double click on some edges. You might need to hold down Control or Command to go all the way around the loop or use some of your selection options here, but I'm just gonna go all the way around there and I wanna go to flatten. We can also use the crease option, which is probably a good place to start as well if we crease that, and then we can come back to flatten. And what flatten allows us to do is create an average of all the selected vertices. So once I select all these, I'm gonna use the fit option. We could also select a plane or a parallel plane, but in this case, the fit option will allow us to create an average of all of those selected vertices, making sure that we have something that is flat. Now let's bring back the mesh and see where we fit. Okay, you can see that this body is sticking through. And if we rotate this around slightly, you can see that this entire face here is sort of sticking through the mesh body. So this is where the trick comes in. We're gonna to go to modify and we're gonna take a look at some of our options. We have this pull option, which will allow us to take uh, selected vertices to a face or a surface. And we also have this match option. Now there are differences between the two. The one we're gonna focus on is gonna be pull, but it's important to note that match will allow you to use something like the edge of a surface or a sketch curve, which can be extremely helpful. In this case, when we're trying to match to a body, it's not gonna help us here. So we're gonna select pull, Notice that we have some options, auto and selected targets. Auto is gonna be extremely helpful when we're dealing with a mesh because there are so many, uh, in this case, mesh faces, all, all these triangles and these quads, it's gonna automatically push to the closest point. We also have the option to use surface points or control points. And if you don't remember what those are, remember under the utilities, we have Alt 1, which will show us our box display, 2, which will show us the, the control, and three, which is smooth. 
So if we go to two, the smooth display underneath is generally what we're working with, and the box display is going to show us the control points. So when we're using surface points or control points, it's gonna be the difference between selecting the smooth surface or selecting the corners of the box display. So in our case, we're gonna use surface points and we're just gonna start selecting these vertices. Once we select them, notice that it's pushing them up to our mesh curve or bringing them down to the mesh curve. So this is a good way for us to get a general representation. Of course, the more subdivisions or vertices that we can select in this area, the closer we will be to the underlying shape. Now, it's always a good rule of thumb to not have too many divisions, too many vertices or edges to control. So in this case, we've got a very simplified version or simplified model. But this is one way that we can take a mesh body, in this case, a converted mesh body, and we can perfectly match the surfaces or the faces of our sub D or T-spline body that we're working with. But what happens if the body that we're working with is actually a surface and not a mesh? So let's go back into the Camaro body and let's scroll all the way down until we find the trunk and let's show that. So in this case, we'll go to modify. We'll use the same tool, pull, and this time we're gonna use selected targets. So we're gonna select our vertices and we're gonna select our targets. Let's start by going back up to our vertices and let's just select these three outside ones. And then for our target, let's select the surface. Notice that it's breaking it up by faces, but when we select the face and we say, okay, you'll notice that nothing really changed. Now, the, the difference that happens here is that in some cases, you'll be able to perfectly match to the surface, while in others, it'll try to push it out to the edge. Now, you have to be careful in which tool you use and how that works, um, but in some cases, you, you do actually really wanna be very careful what you're selecting, and in this case, the way that this trunk was broken up, it actually worked out okay, so both of these options would be valid. If we tried to use match, for example, we'd have to select a T-spline edge, it's gonna go ahead and grab these two outside, and a target edge. So notice that this is asking me to grab the edge of a surface and not actually the surface face itself. So that option isn't gonna work for us. Before we move on, the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna talk about ways in which we can do this with surface or solid tools. So I'm gonna select both of these faces. I'm gonna to go to Modify, Edit Form, and I'm just gonna bring this down and say okay. And the reason I'm gonna bring it down is I want it to go through this body here, so that way I can use those tools. So now we're gonna finish form. Because this was completely closed, it is converted to a solid body. So if we scroll back up, you can see that we have a solid body here. This means now that we can use surface tools. Now in our case, this is already a surface, but if it wasn't, we would wanna to go to our surface tools and potentially use create offset. So I'm gonna create an offset of this outside face, and I'm gonna use zero millimeters. If you, for example, needed to add a small gap, let's say that you were using double-sided tape or you had a rubber gasket, we could add that small gap and we just need to make sure that the small gap is going the correct direction. In our case, we, we do also need to be careful when you start adding gaps to offset surfaces, you wanna make sure you're careful what you've actually selected. So if you have got a rounded corner or a crease or a filleted edge, then you need to be sure that the distance that you're offsetting can actually be achieved. In some cases, it can't be because either one of the surfaces completely disappears or it can't handle the curvature change. So it can be, um, it can be a pretty dangerous thing depending on which surfaces you're selecting. And you can see here, it wouldn't actually let me do one millimeter, but if I reset that to zero, um, it's gonna allow it. Also keep in mind if we deselect this, that if you hover over certain areas, it's going to wanna to grab the entire body, which we can do by selecting it in the browser, um, or it can select certain areas. If you turn off chain selection, we can pick just the faces that we want. And a lot of times that'll be a little bit easier to handle. So now that we have our faces, let's scroll down once more and just hide that trunk so that way we can see what's working. And now if we view this from the right or the left side, you can see that we have our solid body and we have the surface of the top of our trunk or deck. So now how do we break these apart? We do that with a couple different tools. 
If this was a surface body, so for example, if these faces didn't exist, if I just hit delete, I've now converted it to a surface. If this was a surface body, we could use the trim tool. The trim tool allows us to pick a trimming tool, in this case, the, the deck lid, and then we need to select the areas that we wanna get rid of. So we're gonna grab the outside face of that surface. Now you'll notice that the way that this works in some cases is a bit finicky. Um, it doesn't always get rid of everything that you want. So in this case, I can make my selections, I can say okay, and I've gotten rid of everything. And then I need to repeat the process. So I need to repeat the process with the trim tool now being this, and then I wanna remove the outside of the trunk. Now where this you know, sometimes becomes a problem is the number of surface bodies that you end up having. The next thing that we would do in this case is we would stitch all these together to turn this back into a solid. So now, once again, we have a solid body. I'm gonna undo a lot of that. I'm gonna come back until that delete face. And since we are dealing with a surface body and a solid body, there are a couple other tools that we can use. One of those tools is in the solid tool set under modify, and we have replace face. Replace face allows us to select the source faces and then the target faces. When we do this, if you ever have any questions, there's always a little eye in the bottom left-hand corner and then it'll give you a little bit more information. Here it says the faces to remove are the source faces and the new faces are targets. Also, if you hit more information, it'll open up the fusion tips on the web and you can view it from there. So again, the source faces are gonna be the ones that we wanna remove. The target faces are going to be the new faces and you can see here that it's causing an error. Now the way that this happens or the reason that this happens, and you'll kind of see some of the highlighting underneath, is that it's having a problem reconciling everything. So in this case, I'm going to select tangent chain and allow it to try to select everything. And again, it's having problems. And you will find that that tool tends to have trouble when the geometry gets to be a little complicated. But again, there are usually more than one way to do this. So let's explore another option. Under modify, we have a tool called split body. Split body allows us to select the body to split, in this case our solid, and the tool. Now, this is a trick here because when we try to select this and we view it from, let's say, the back, it's going to extend the splitting tool, and this, the splitting tool is going to extend out based on the curvature. This might be hard to see, but you'll notice that the trunk lid is actually underneath here. So the trick with this is actually to come in and select the body inside of the browser rather than selecting the face. Then we'll say okay. And then if we hide our surface, you'll notice that we have two extra solid bodies. These are solid bodies that have been split off and now we have an exact match for the trunk lid. So once again, there were a lot of different things that we tried to make this work and some of them work better than others in certain cases, which is why I wanted to show all of them. At this point, we can select the surfaces, we can select any bodies that we don't want, we can right click and select remove, which will put a feature in the timeline that we can always go back before to bring back some of those bodies if we need them. In this case, however, we simply wanted to get rid of it. Now I can go back in and I can bring back all of the bodies for the rest of the car. I'm gonna just select all of them, show hide. And if we view this from the side, we now have a spoiler that is a perfect match for this underlying surface of the trunk. Once again, this is sort of a quick example. I know we're pushing about 20 minutes, so it can only be so quick. But if you were going to use this method to create um, a hood scoop or a fender flare or some other body part, this is the exact same method that you could use, assuming that you have a model that's representative of whatever you're trying to attach to doesn't have to be a car, it could be any product. If you have a cell phone, for example, that you've scanned, you can have a mesh version of that and then you can use these tools to uh, exactly match vertices in your T-spline or form body to perfectly surround that product. So the car is just a pretty common example. Someone could go out to their car, they can look at it, they can see the shapes. And then if you're lucky enough to have a 3D model or be able to create that 3D model, uh, then you can really use that to your advantage to start designing these products. Again, there are plenty of other ways to do this. I didn't cover all of the different versions, but we did look at a couple of tools. There is another one under the Create menu that's called Boundary Fill that can also be used when you're talking about adding or removing sections of bodies 
based on planes, surfaces, and solid bodies. It's a little bit more complicated and I didn't really wanna cover it here, but that is another tool that does work for this. And of course, you can also use things like split face and some of the surface tools can be used as well. But that covers a handful of different workflows to make this kind of design work. So I'd love to hear if anybody is using or planning on using this type of technique to design any parts. It uh, really comes down to the quality of the model that you have to start with. If you have something that is really close to a representation of your car or whatever the product is, then this obviously works a whole lot better. If you have a generic model that is close approximation, it might still be okay. But obviously, if, if the 3D model that you start with doesn't even come close to representing reality, then going this far to converting bodies to meshes or to use some of these tools really isn't going to make a difference in the long run. But again, I would love to hear if anybody is using these techniques and what you've designed with them. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.